Welcome in guys. Today's a beginner level workout, green level. So if you're new to fitness, if you're just getting back into fitness, or if you'd like something to warm up for one of your bigger workouts later on, this is perfect for you. So this one today, you'll want a mat. Um, if, if you don't have a carpeted floor, um, a towel will do. We are spending a little bit of time on the floor. So I'm gonna roll this out now. And I'm gonna demonstrate some of the movements that we've got today. Um, if you wanna jump straight into the workout, check out the comments below or the, the description below. There'll be a little tag there, chapter marker to go straight to the workout today. 25 minute workout, which is enough to get us moving, enough to get us activated for those foundational strength and, uh, and, and human body mobility movement things. <laughs> All right, first movement that we've got today is called the donkey hydrant. Now, a lot of these work that we're doing, they're actually actually uh, complexes. They're, they're combinations of two movements because I want to go for bang for your buck today. I want to spend the, the 25 minutes that we've got doing as much as we can for our coordination and, and our bodies here. So donkey hydrants, we're going to start hands and knees. What we're going to do first off, take one leg. So pick the right hand side first, do a donkey kick, single leg donkey kick. See how the, the leg goes straight up towards the ceiling. And then we're going to do a fire hydrant. Now, if you've never done a fire hydrant or never seen it before, it's exactly what you'd think a doggy would do as it walks up to a fire hydrant. So keeping the hips flat, activating the one glute on the other side, keep the hips flat and lift the leg laterally. So what we're working is the glute max and then the medial glute on the side. Glute max and then medial glute. Awesome. So you'll get plenty of practice of this um, in the workout itself. So don't worry if I rush through this. Knee push-ups are next. So again, on the mat here because we don't want to scrape our knees too much. This is a perfect regression to learn how to get into full push-ups. The way that I like to get into it is from a full plank, up on your hands, bend the knees, keeping the knees, the hips, and the shoulders in line, and then performing the push-up from here. So what we're doing is we're removing a little bit of the force that you have to apply through the push-up by shortening the lever arm from our feet to our knees there. Um, if, you, if you still don't feel comfortable doing knee push-ups, look for a high countertop or a high bench or a wall even, and you can perform your push-ups up against the wall there like that. Okay, after the knee push-ups, we have the, the standard squat, regular little squat. You don't need the, the mat for this one. So just find yourself a little bit of space. What I do recommend people do, if they're not used to squatting or if they have trouble squatting, have a play with the width of your feet. Because I know a lot of people will start off with exact shoulder width and their toes will be pointed out maybe 45 degrees or so, but not everyone's built the same. Our hips are all different. Our mobility is all different in the, in the knees and the ankles, or hips, knees and ankles, I should say. So what you wanna do, if you find yourself squatting down and your heels coming up off the ground at this point, maybe try going a little bit wider, pointing the toes out a little bit wider and making sure that you are pushing your butt back and sitting down onto an invisible chair there. So just repeat through this and you will get better with them over time. You'll get better with every rep that you do. Every time you, 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 you're mindful of where your feet are, how your form looks, if your core is braced as well. So keep practicing. After the squats, we have a plank, again on the mat, forearms on the floor. So you can actually do a plank on your hands if you'd like. Um, I like to teach them on the forearms here. You're going down a little bit lower. And what it does teach you to do is keep your body a little bit straighter and you're very, very mindful of where your butt is in space. So you're gonna squeeze the glutes, squeeze the quads, straighten the legs, push the heels back, shoulders over the elbows, and breathing into the belly. There you go. So we're just gonna hold the plank now. Um, we, after the plank, we're doing bird dogs. So again on the mat. The bird dog, for us beginners, we're gonna be hands and knees. And what we're gonna do is take a contralateral approach to this. So the right hand goes out straight, left leg goes out straight, Hold it for a second, bring it down. Left hand out straight, straighten that right leg out directly behind you, hold it for a second and then come down. So these are bird dogs. What we're trying to do is hold our shoulders and our hips flat, and then we're gonna brace that core. This is all about the, the core bracing today. Um, the core bracing is very important for some of the bigger movements you do once you start playing with kettlebells and dumbbells and, and barbells and things like that. So after bird dogs, we're gonna be standing. We've got elbows to knees. Now this is a regression of one of the, the more intense movements I like to do called a steam engine. All you're doing is standing up straight, fingertips to the, el uh, to the temples, bring elbow to the knee, elbow to the knee. So this is like a standing bicycle crunch, but you're bringing the knee up instead of the, the chest down towards the knees. So standing up nice and straight, bring that knee up as high as you can. 
after elbows to knees, we're doing our superhero pulses. So if you are a superhero that could fly, you're gonna assume that position on a mat, arms out in front of you, legs straight, and we're gonna pulse so that you raise your chest and your thighs off the floor, and then bring it down. Chest and thighs off the floor, bring it down, and that's it. That's it. Pulsing there. And then the final movement in today's workout is the step jack. Now, one, one of the, the things that I get told when, when we're teaching <coughs> uh, we're teaching jumping jacks and we're teaching anything that involves bouncing and jumping is that sometimes the ankles and the, and the calves start to feel it really, really quickly. That's especially if you're not conditioned for it. Um, the calves can actually get very tired very quickly. So what we like to do in order to learn the motions and just get our heart rate pumping if we're not used to moving a lot is what we call a step jack where I step to the side, hands above the head, step in and then repeat. So it's a little bit like a jumping jack motion with the arms at least, but with the feet, we're not jumping into the air and we're not putting any undue pressure on our ankles and calves there. So stepping left and right, you can increase the intensity by moving faster, um, but as always, dial it to whatever your fitness level is there. So that's the tutorial team. We're gonna get into this workout now. Make sure your watches are in cardio mode if you've got a heart rate strap on. Press go, and in 20 seconds time, we're gonna kick into the donkey hydrants. So welcome in on YouTube. Welcome in Twitch chat, how you going? As always, if you're live in the workout here, I'm checking out chat now. If you've got any questions about form or any of the movements here, please chuck them in. We can have a chat about them. And if you're on YouTube, welcome to another beginner workout. So donkey hydrants, hands on the floor, knees on the floor. I'm gonna kick one knee up, donkey kick, and then out to the side for that hydrant. So with these ones, you wanna be nice and not necessarily slow, but you wanna be controlled. You may have heard me say things well, it wasn't me that made this up. I heard this somewhere else. But you say, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That's with this movement here. You don't want to be flinging yourself around. You don't want to rely on momentum for movements. Speed comes with time. You get faster at things. Now this movement, again, I don't think there'd be too much benefit in making this movement fast. When you do get more advanced, you start looking at things like plyometrics where you, where you apply a force over time. But for this one, it's about activation. Um, and that's why I say these green workouts are really good for, uh, for a warm up for more advanced people if you've got some, got some lifting to do um, because we're activating all those right muscles that, that you need to brace the core and be stable in future. So let's do these knee push ups now. You've got a 30 second rest between every block here. Now with the knee push ups, again, starting in a high plank, hands on the floor, toes on the floor. Um, this is a really good habit to get into to form a nice straight plank bending the knees, letting the hips drop as you bend the knees as well, and then all the way down. So there's, there's a lot of benefit in, in doing a, an, a regressed push-up with the full range of motion, as opposed to trying to muscle through a full push-up with a, with a limited range of motion. Because a lot of the times when we are, when we are um, trying to max out a movement and we're not able to get as many reps or as much weight as we like is because we're not very strong at the, at the extremes of the end of, of, of the range of motion. Um, we're either not very strong down here or we're not very strong at the top here. So that's why it's very important to, to bring that intensity down and try and do a full range of motion as opposed to just full push-ups like this, if that makes sense. Okay, let's get our squats in. Same deal with the squats. Um, I'd much prefer that we get more of a range of motion in with a body weight squat than trying to push a big heavy squat for a quarter of the motion, okay? So again, feet about shoulder width apart. Some people are gonna find you need to go a bit wider than that. As you work on hip mobility, as you work on ankle mobility, you're gonna find yourself being able to bring your feet a little bit closer together. You see that? When, I'm, when my feet are closer together, I need much more ankle mobility to be able to get my knees forward much closer. Whereas out wide, less ankle mobility required, but a bit more hip mobility. So it changes, and everyone's bodies are different too. Not only are your hip joints different, but you've got different length tibia, different length femurs, different ratios between height and leg length, all that fun stuff. So pull your mat back into the center of the room again. We're gonna hold our plank now. Very important to note with this one, I don't expect you all to hold 30 seconds right away. You've got a 30 second working period 
And what I'd like you to do is try and hold for as long as you can until you feel the wobbles kick in. So straighten those legs out, push the heels back, shoulders over the elbows and breathe. Now, if you feel yourself wobbling, you feel your hips dipping, after about 10 seconds or so, feel free to drop to the ground, count to three, two, one, pop back up, engage that core, breathe into it. Very important that you breathe. It is actually quite easy to hold a solid plank while you're holding your breath, but you're not gonna be able to hold that for long. And you need, your body needs oxygen. You, you need to feed those muscles so that you can actually get some endurance with certain holds and movements there. Perfect, we've got our bird dogs now. So again, back in the middle of the room here. How are we all going? They're pretty quick changes, and I'm, I'm talking pretty fast as well. So just if you need to, if you're watching this on YouTube, pause if you'd like some more rest, and then restart it when you're good to go. So hands and knees now. So what we're gonna do is point one hand and the opposite leg goes out straight and down. So what you should be feeling, what you should be looking for, is the leg that's pointing, that butt cheek should be activating. Not the lower back, but the butt cheek, okay? The hand that's going forward, you should feel a nice stretch in the lat, and then you should feel the back of the shoulders start to activate, okay? So hold, down, nice. If you hold it for a little bit longer, you're gonna feel that a little bit more. So that's a quick tip. If you find that just going up and down and up and down isn't really activating things for you. Hold it for two seconds, hold it for three seconds and see how that feels, okay? <clears throat> yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, slow it down to, a, to, to, to 0.75 and I'll, I'll sound about normal, <laughs> okay? Morning, Star Wolby, how are you going? Okay, elbows to knees. So we're gonna find ourselves a nice spot here where we can put our fingertips to the temples, where we can kick our knee up and try and hit, hit the elbow. Mm. Now the important bit with this, watch my torso and my head. They're, they're upright. I'm not, I'm not craning my neck, I'm not bending at the hips here. I'm bringing the knee up. So if you can only get to this, don't worry, don't stress. As long as your intent is to get the elbow up to the knee and you're doing everything you can to get to whatever your range of motion is without bending forward, then well done you. And what you're gonna do is remember how high you can get that knee, how, how far off you are from touching the elbow to knee whilst keeping good form. And over time, that's what you're gonna work on. You're gonna try this again later on and see how high you can actually get, see if you can touch them. Because that's a milestone, that's something to celebrate. If you actually get to full form, full range of motion with something, and you've been working on it, good stuff. Yeah, all right, superhero pulses. We're gonna get down on the floor like we're, like we're flying. Straight arms, straight legs. We're gonna hold it for one second. So chest and thighs off the floor, down. Go again, chest and thighs, down. The trick to this one is being able to breathe and even talk whilst you're in that pulse. So the, the, the trick with that is having a solid core so that you can actually move your diaphragm inside your body and breathe, as opposed to trying to move your chest or your belly when you breathe. So that's a little bit of a trick, um, because obviously what's gonna happen with that, as you get better with pulses and pulses and pulses, we're gonna try and aim for holds. So when you get to the intermediate, when you get to the advanced levels, we go for 30 second hold, 60 second superhero hold. So they're tough. A lot of posterior muscles and a lot of core control required for that. So it's gonna be step jacks. I'm gonna make some room for myself. <clears throat> there we go. Step jacks, like jumping jacks, straight arms. I'd like you to touch your hands above your head. Clap if you can. Straight arms clapping. And we're gonna step from side to side. So once you've got this overhead shoulder mobility, once you've got the, the arms moving and you've got the legs in a good rhythm, speed it up a little bit. Here we go. Keep a nice soft bend in the knees and ankles. Gold, how you going, mate? Welcome to Beginner land again. Welcome to the uh, the entry level workouts where we're getting warmed up for what for my guests. I've got a guest coming in. So if you're watching live on Twitch, stick around after this workout. We've got some fun stuff happening. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Donkey hydrants. So you see here, we've got 17 minutes left. That was eight minutes in. So we've got three rounds to do. That was round number one. Cool. 
Yeah. Now, I haven't mentioned this to Mikey. No, no stress. Actually, I think Mikey would enjoy it. Um, because we do have front page coming up, <clears throat> Twitch did say to, uh, to uh, let your mods know. But look, it's been pretty good, hasn't it? There haven't been too many, too many incidents that, that we've required any, uh, any drastic action on. So we'll see how we go. Hey, donkey hydrants, hands and knees. We're gonna push towards the ceiling, hold and down. Push out towards the side, lifting that leg and down. I want you to pretend there's a bucket of water on your back, that classic bucket of water. Good old bucket of water. And you're not letting your hips rotate. You're not letting your shoulders rotate. So this is all about glute activation, this one. It's all about the max, gluteus maximus, and the medial glute on the side. So the big one on the back, and the, and the stabilizing one on the side, the important one. Actually, I, I think I like the medial glute more than the glute max. Glute max gets all the attention, doesn't it? <laughs> the medial's very, very good. And take a rest, good. Good, good, good. <clears throat> All right, knee push-ups. So again, we're talking about that range of motion. We're thinking about how far we can go. If you can get your chest to the deck, please do. Try and go all the way down. Um, a, good, a good way to actually practice that end range of motion, I'll do it now in this one, is to take your hands off of the floor, the hand release push-up. Now doing them with the knees means that you don't have to, to push away with as much force, so it's actually a bit more accessible to do, but you get that benefit of going all the way down. So here we go, bending the knees, bringing the heels towards the butt, all the way down, release the hands, and then push up. There we go. So if you start this now, it's like, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a couple of sayings that you hear people say, like, think about if you had started a year ago, how much, how much you'd have achieved by now. So if you can start doing this now, Think about in three months time, when you've been practicing your push-ups and you can actually crank out a whole bunch of full push-ups because you've been practicing your knee push-ups. Think about that. So there's no better time to start than now. Um, what is that? That's a, that's, a, that's a bit of a mouthful, that username. How are you going? <laughs> we got squats to do, team. So let's go. We're holding the feet at about shoulder width apart. We're gonna hold our hands in front of us for balance. I want you to keep your chest and your head upright. You're sitting down on an invisible chair and we're pushing through the heels. You wanna keep your heels flat on the floor for this one, okay? So time your breathing as well. You wanna breathe in, have a nice brace core as you go down. Breathe out on the way up. Trying to keep your core tight. Trying to keep that range of motion really nice as well. You'd like to get your butt to about the same level as your knees. Now there's a bit of contention on social media. People that like to argue will argue. Um, but what you're looking for is a, is a nice strong brace core. And when you're doing body weight squats as well, there is a bit of concession for sacrum dip and things like that. So don't stress. If you are worried about your form, engage with a local PT um, or someone like myself that does the PT online as well we can help you out too. So <clears throat> the main thing though, is if you're in a position where you're doing squats and you're worried about your form, good on you because you're actually doing squats and you're getting off your butt and you're doing something that 90% of people out there should be doing more of. Um, so no stress, you've got that. You've got that discipline to actually be doing something. So like a plank, you're holding that core nice and tight. And before you know it, you're getting through 30 seconds without even thinking about it. When you're starting though, like I said, 10 seconds is a good time. If you need to rest after 10 seconds, drop to the floor, count to three, jump back up again and hold that. Now we got the bird dogs to get back into in 15 seconds. Here we go. So hands and knees, hands and knees, hands and knees. Time your breathing as well. The one cue that I haven't given you, which I will give you now, is pretend that you really need to go to the bathroom and I want you to hold your pee. So use those muscles that you use to hold your pee if you are busting to go to the toilet. 
because those muscles are actually called your pelvic floor muscles. They're both, they're, they're very important for all genders. Um, don't, don't make the mistake of thinking they're just for women that are going to give birth or women that have given birth. They're very important for everyone because they're, they're an important part of core bracing for weightlifting as well. So think about that. If you can hold your pee every now and then, just think about it. I'm not necessarily saying to hold your pee because there, there are some other health complications that can come from actually holding your pee for too long. But if you can use those muscles that you use to hold your pee, you're gonna find a lot of things later in life as well. Um, again, not just for pregnancy related issues, but also just, you know, like a, a, bit, of a bit of a leaky plumbing issue. Um, it helps with that later on in life too. So no, nothing's taboo here on, on, on our FFP. Remember that. We're, we're, we're talking about all sorts of health issues there. Um, and we should try and not put like an embarrassing stigma on certain things. Here we go. So elbows to knees. I'm raising my elbow on my knee as high as I can. I'm keeping my head upright. So you can see I'm, I'm kind of leaning back a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to lean back a bit so I can keep my, keep my torso upright and not fall forward. So it does require some, some lower back stability, it requires some upper back stability and a little bit of rotation as well. Mmm, superhero pulses, nice. I'd like you to try for a little bit longer a pulse now. Let's go for three seconds. So we'll get maybe eight or nine of these in, depending on how long you rest. <clears throat> Actually, no, half that, four or five. So three seconds, up, three, two, one, down, take a rest. Let's go, three, two, one, down, take a breath in. Let's go, three, two, one and down. With each rep, I'm taking my chest and my thighs off the floor. Go, straight legs, straight arms. So it's like I'm balancing on my belly, which does highlight the importance of good breathing as well. Finish this rep off. Good, nice. Okay, we got our step jacks. So this will, this will round out round number two. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's go. I'm, I'm pumped, I'm ready. 10 seconds. <laughs> so remember with the step jacks, straight arms, if you can clap above your head, try not to bend the arms. What I want you to do is work on that straight arm mobility that, that enables you to get your shoulders up into that upright position. So straight arms, taking a step to the left, then to the right. If you feel it, you can see, you can, you can pretty quickly upgrade this to a, to a jumping jack, if you like. This is where I'm giving you the power over your own workout. So you can choose if you want to get a little bit more effort in, but it sometimes pays to slow things down and work through the, work through the motions. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Because the other thing is a lot of weightlifters, they don't like, they don't like the, uh, the C word, cardio. That's what happens. They, they, they get a bit afraid of, of, of cardio. Um, so you don't have to do full jumping jacks if you don't want to. You can do your step jacks, all right? <laughs> hey, Finicus, how you going? <laughs> okay, we've got our donkey hydrants. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Finicus, I think you're gonna like my special guest today. Yeah, mate, we got a, we got, and what time is it now? Hmm, 17 minutes. In 17 minutes time, our special guest is rocking up. So we'll finish off this workout. And we'll get ready for a, the devil's workout. Yeah, yeah, I guessed, yes. Yes, I guessed. <laughs> now, I don't even think, I, I haven't told any of my mods who it is. It's actually a special guest. Okay, donkey hydrants, last round. Let's give it everything we've got. So donkey, hold it for a second. Hydrant, fire hydrant, hold it. Donkey, so glutes, glutes and hips. Mm -mm -mm. How are those Friday feels? If you're watching this on YouTube, you've got a six out of seven chance of this not being a Friday. So if you're watching this and it is a Friday, you probably should go out and buy a lotto ticket because I'm pretty sure that's how maths works. Don't. Gambling uh, is addictive and 
it, there's a lot of problems around it. So, so that was a joke. Um, I'm not gonna get up and, and press a, a jokey button because I'm doing my doing my my exercises, right? Yeah, do I mean a guest or a ghost? Ooh, I, I, I wanted to have some more spoopy noises. I just I just ran out of time. I was gonna get some more. I do have this one, like a. It's the wrong kind of boo though, isn't it? It's a boo. boo. Okay, let's get these knee push-ups in. <laughs> All right. So remember what I said, we're gonna bend the knees, we're gonna let the, the hips drop as we bend the knees. Hand release, push all the way up to straight arms. Hand release, push. Now don't let the, don't let the arms explode. If you, if you go a violent extension, that can cause issues with your elbows, so try to avoid that. Just a soft extension in the elbows. If you find that you are at that point where you're exploding up, and you're getting like a really powerful bang, powerful extension, then at that point, I think it's time that you look at full push-ups. You can, you can look at a progression to full push-ups, okay? Oh, I don't miss. I got, I got a bunch of cool shirts. Gold, yeah. This is a good one today. With a spoopy strim. Yeah. <laughs> okay, squats. Squats. Now, I'd like you to speed these up a bit. This is the third round, the final round of today's workout. So, let's go a little bit faster. I'd like you to try and get a little deeper, try a little bit faster, but maintain your form, okay? If you feel like your heels are coming up off the floor like this, slow it back down. So this is very, very much a, very, very much a, a self-regulated workout, which, you know what, there, there is a little bit of danger in that, where if you, you do learn bad habits from the beginning, you can take them on to, to later on in your journey. So that's why I talk so much. Hopefully I can, I can give everyone a little bit of a new tidbit to remember, or a reminder every single time you do a rep, to brace your core, hold your pee, push your butt back, heels flat on the floor, all those kind of things. So. Just after, after 10 years, 10 years of working out, you actually find that a lot of these things just stick. Um, and you know, a lot of the things I learned when I was younger in my, in my journey were wrong or they were misguided. And through the process of education and certification, I've, I've kind of found myself onto a better path, onto a more correct path. But always, always, always remain open to criticism. Remain open to criticism or feedback or anything that anyone might they pick you up on. There's a chance they could be wrong. There's a chance they could be right though. So, always be humble, always be a student. Squeezing the butt, squeezing the quads, pushing the heels back, shoulders over the elbows, breathe into your belly. And like I said, oh, I'm tired. Three, two, one, get up again. Get up. What's the saying? I've never understood this saying. You know, you know how they say, fall down seven times, get up eight. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I like the maths on that. They, they say if you fall down seven times, you get up eight times, but that assumes that you're starting having fallen down already. So I think it's if you fall down seven times, then get up seven times, because then you'll be up. Does that make, I, actually, I, I, never, I never liked that saying. I never liked it. Let's go, bear dogs, go. Have a think about that while you're, while you're pointing both the hand and the foot, and down. Point, hold it for three, two, one, and down, here we go, point. Hold it for three, two, one, and down. Or maybe, was that a contronym that's now been formed into some kind of perverted, accepted piece of English language? I don't know. I need some more brain workout material to get me smart. Why can't we keep it simple? If you fall down, get back up. None of this seven times. Yeah, I think now you're, now you're thinking with, with programming. Now you're thinking with portals fit because if you're a programmer, you're just gonna write a, a conditional statement in a while loop, right? While standing, if fall, execute, get up. Easy, loop. All right, elbows to knees chat, let's go. So. Fingertips at the temples. You're gonna kick your knee up to the elbow, knee to the elbow. Yeah, yeah. Then repeat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you could do. You could do a. Uh... See, there is danger in a wild loop, isn't there? There's de there's danger in a in an infinite. While not up, get up. Oh, 
Oh, gold, yeah. Ha, while not up, get up. But what if, but what if I can't get it up? <laughs> ah, look, we have fun on a Friday chat. Yeah, we have fun. <laughs> That's one thing. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit serious about this now. It's really, really good to have a workout partner or a workout buddy that can make you smile. Because even through like the worst movements, even through the, the bad times, if you can have a giggle at something while you're at the gym, it's gonna do two things. It's gonna do, number one, it's gonna get you through the, through the reps that you don't like. It's like this one. Hold it in three, two, one. Bang. But also, next time you're ready to go to the gym, hold it, three, two, one. You're actually gonna be looking forward to going and hanging out with that person. Up, go, three, two, one, down. So there's gonna be a little bit of an effect of accountability. Get up, three, two, one, down. Because you have fun with that person. You have fun with them. The while loop is good because even if you can't, you keep trying. That's, that's the spirit, isn't it? That's the attitude we want. You keep trying. All right, let's get this last round in, guys. We got our step jacks to do. This is it, this is it for the morning. So if you wanna get some, you wanna get some cardio. Oh, we hate it. Oh, weightlifters hate it. Go. That's like a YouTube thumbnail, isn't it? Or, or it's, a, it's a clickbait title. The one thing that bodybuilders hate. Okay, here we go. Getting those step jacks in. Get a nice rhythm going, get a nice bounce going. And once you can control this step jack rhythm, that's when you can think about progressing, you can think about leveling up. Get enough experience points with step jacks, you, get, you unlock the, the jumping jack. Here we go, ready? Nice! One thing the bodybuilders hate number four will shock you. All right, in all serious now, thanks for joining me on that workout. The green levels are the beginners, so if you were doing a, uh, you were doing a bigger workout later in today, well done on you for getting warmed up properly. You get the heart rate up a little bit, you see it's green, get the heart rate up. Um, and also just activating the right muscles. For everyday life, the glute max, glute med, those are two very, very important, important muscles to prevent back pain later on. Um, and also just to, to have a good form in standing, sitting, whatever you're doing there. So thanks for joining me on YouTube. If you did that one and you want a bit more of a challenge, look for the blue workouts, the intermediate levels. Um, if you're live on Twitch here, twitch.tv forward slash fit for purpose, stick around, we got some fun. So thanks guys.